needs consistency. We need ratings, damn it. Welcome to the jungle, everyone. I'm Kyle Phelps, and when I don't like a result, I just change the rules. <laughs> yeah, we're going down that road today. We're going to break down the NFL's new postseason rules today, how we got here, what it means for the NFL, and I'm going to tell you what I think about it, too. But before we get into all that, I'd just like to ask that you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content. It really helps my channel grow and helps you know when I drop all of my content. So, first things first, what the hell are we even talking about? Well, as I'm sure many of you remember, the NFL owners voted nearly unanimously, wasn't unanimous, it was, you know, all but three owners, to change up the overtime rules back in March. No longer can you win a game in the postseason in overtime by winning the coin toss and scoring a touchdown on the first possession. Again, just in the postseason. You could still do that in the regular season, so I'm, I'm not sure why we're playing parts of the NFL season by different rules, but here we are. Who needs consistency? We need ratings, damn it! If you all recall, this is the second time that the NFL has changed the overtime rules in just over a decade or so. Back before 2011, a lot of people were up in arms over a perceived lack of fairness that the old overtime rules had as well. Back then, it was total sudden death. Any points at all on the first possession of overtime would just completely end the game at that point. A lot of people argued that that system was unfair because too easy to march 30 to 40 yards downfield and if you get lucky, win a coin toss, you basically just win the game, right? However, there was also the opposing camp that argued that the rule change unnecessarily extends the football game, therefore potentially leading to more exhaustion, more injuries, and possibly even a more inferior product. Sound familiar? It should, because that's pretty much the exact same argument we're having today. You know, ten years later, the rule change didn't help anything. It was most recently highlighted by the divisional round matchup between the Kansas City Chiefs and Buffalo Bills in the playoffs last year. The Bills and Chiefs ended up tying after regulation 36-36. It was an amazing game, especially the final two minutes where the Bills and Chiefs combined for 24 total points. In the final two minutes of the game, that's 14 for the Bills, 10 for the Chiefs. And those final 10 points, by the way, between the Bills and Chiefs, came within the final 20 seconds of regulation. It was glorious and probably the best football game I had ever seen in my entire life. As you can imagine, it was quite relieving to know that a game like that would not be anticlimactically ended by a field goal capped off by a lackluster offensive drive. No, this game was going to end in a touchdown from one of these two teams unless there was some truly great defensive stop at some point. The Chiefs won the toss, and they elected to receive the kick, which would make sense. You know, they scored 36 points in the game, and they were red hot, so that gives you the best chance to win. So, hopefully without spoiling the ending for anybody, the Chiefs ended up winning that game by marching down the field and scoring a touchdown. The Bills' defense looked just totally exhausted and kind of let the Chiefs do whatever they wanted to on offense. Naturally, Bills fans complained incessantly afterwards that their fate was seemingly determined by a coin toss. So I understand the frustration, I really do, but changing a rule because you didn't like the outcome seems a little bit ridiculous to me. Here's an idea. Play some damn defense! Did we forget that that was part of the game, too? It's like, I'm sorry, but the Bengals got into the same situation the following week in the AFC Championship against the Chiefs. And their defense, by the way, had just had to endure a grueling six-plus minute drive before they were asked to go back out there on the first possession of overtime. The Bills' defense, by contrast, played all of about 65 seconds of football immediately before overtime in the divisional round. It wasn't nearly what the Bengals had to deal with. And you know what the Bengals did? They put on their big boy britches. They went out and they played some damn defense. They held Patrick Mahomes to two straight incompletions and Von Bell all but sealed things up with an interception at the Chiefs 45. 
That right there is how you win a football game. If the NFL wants to change rules because they think it'll lead to a more interesting football experience for the fans, by all means, you know, whatever. But it feels like we're changing the rules to appease the teams that lost just to make them feel better. And you know what that reminds me of? It reminds me of back when they made pass interference reviewable for a little bit, which was a terrible idea and everybody afterwards was like, we can't do this anymore, it slows the game down too much. Because the Saints and their fans whined incessantly, somewhat understandably, over getting shafted by the refs on that pass interference in 2018. Or how about when the Bills did the same thing back in 1988 because they didn't like the Bengals running the hurry up offense and basically running through the NFL because of that. Thank God the NFL didn't change the rules back then, but do you see what I mean at this point? Changing the rules every time somebody's upset because they lost kind of messes with the sport itself. If we're just going to assume that losing the coin flip means that you're losing the game, then what's even the point of playing defense in the first place? And then there's the player safety angle too. Like, I really think we should bring back the old, old school overtime rules, uh, or maybe do what college and high school do, where each team gets like a short field and tries to score, like, like a penalty shootout of sorts, but trying to play 15 extra minutes seems ridiculous to me. So that's just my opinion on the matter though, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I will feature the best ones in my next video, like this one from Mr. T, probably not that one, <laughs> who said, from a Bills fan of 55 years, I have become a Bengals fan again because of Zach and this team's class, not to mention talent. I used to be a Bengals fan in the 70s and 80s, all class. It's like, yeah, man, I got love for Bills Mafia in general because the Bengals and the Bills, they kind of have this connection ever since the whole Andy Dalton, Tyler Boyd thing against the Ravens. And I think what happened in week 17 just kind of served to bring our fan bases closer together. But I still got to call it like I see it with this rule change shit. But love you, Bills Mafia. Anyway, that's all I got for this one, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. You can always catch more of what I do at KylePhelps92 on Twitter, Facebook.com slash TheFelps, ATBNetwork.com, Sports, Battle of Ohio Podcast, which has its own YouTube channel, and right here if you subscribe. Be more like my team, guys. Rise to the challenge when adversity strikes instead of just changing the rules. I'll leave y'all, as always, with a hootay!